Hi Jenny Byers, Dolores fans. I'm doing month three today and I am so excited because we're starting to put together the compass stars and I love it when you get to the point where you actually see recognize progress from the quilt. So I will show you what templates to use and how I cut it out and give you some little tips. I do want to say right from the beginning Jenny Beyer has put out amazing instructions for you on her newsletter and any of you who would like to follow along with this work on it yourself or save it for as soon as you can do it do know that if you go to her site www.jennybeyer.com and sign up for her newsletter you get this pattern free and each month she'll send you then that month's instructions and she makes a wonderful video so you can sit and watch her actually do the work you can read her instructions and save them download them to a safe place please do not share them anyone who, who wants to follow along with this all they have to do is go sign up for her newsletter for free so here are this month's instructions and I can't wait to get started so first I'll show you what templates to use and then we'll cut out the fabric and um, I'm giving you my experience if you want the best instructions go to Jenny Byer site sign up for her newsletter because then you can see her video and get the instructions for free because no one does it better than Jenny but I love sharing I love my Jenny Byer project so much that I want to share these videos with you each month to show you what it means to me what I learned along the way and um, just share the fun also if you'd like to get a kit for this they're very reasonable they're at JennyBuyer.com and look for Stellaris this year this is called a technique of the month I still call it block of the month I'm so used to saying that but this year you get to see what the quilt's actually going to look like and it is a beauty so if you want that Jenny Buyer magic I suggest you might want to look into getting a kit you can always though buy your own fabrics and also another hint I found her template kit to be invaluable yes I know that you can download the template paper on paper and make your own templates but it's so nice to just be able to cut out the template and get busy and it's a lot of fun this month I'm going to be doing it by hand last month I did it by machine because it was paper piecing and it made it so easy but I'm going back to my favorite which is to make this very special quilt by hand so how will I handle sewing it by hand with one piece in paper with the paper backing and the other piece without hmm so stay tuned to see how I tackle that dilemma all right let's get those templates and let's get started I have to tell you I'm so excited every month when this when her newsletter comes out I get so excited these colors are so amazing Jenny Byer really gave me my love of quilting back I learned back in the 80s and got really tired of pastels and sunbonnet sues and drab little I, I don't know I just couldn't get excited by some of the patterns we had available and the fabrics and back when I learned to quilt the fabrics weren't even a hundred percent cotton so um, I am when I first saw Jenny Byers work and her fabric I was mesmerized and the love of her designs and her fabric got me back into quilting I'm forever grateful because it is a passion of mine that gives me such joy when I see these colors I mean it's a feast for the eyes and I'm so very very excited and did you know that Jenny Byer was one of the first very first uh, fabric designers for the quilting industry 
There's a wonderful book you might want to read on the history of cotton and quilting, and it's called American Cotton from Farm to Quilt. And uh, there's a, a special section in there on Jenny Beyer. I think you'll really appreciate it. But I learned so much from that book. So today we've got the border print. And I love this. And this came with about three and a quarter yards of border print. And I had watched Jenny's. I had read the instructions, not as carefully as I should have. I watched Jenny's video. And I was so concentrated on the templates and the template placing on this border and how to get the mirror imaging to make each of the stars distinctive that I should have read this closely luckily nothing bad happened but when they send you the three and a quarter yards of fabric you ought to take and cut a one yard away leaving 81 inches contiguous that you put away for another month's directions. So I was able, I had started doing the drawing, but I was able to read it in time so that I have my 81 inch piece all put away safe and sound. And now I get to use my templates and draw them. This fabric has six wide stripes across the width of it. And it has five narrow stripes. And you'll use both of these. So let me put these directions aside and show you a few things. I bought the template set that was on the Jenny Buyer site for this particular pattern. And I'm very happy that I did because it's just one less step that I would have to do. But if you don't wish to buy the template set, then you can buy your own template plastic if you wish or cut up some clear or translucent plastic from packaging. I, off, I have a big stash of plastic that I have saved from pa packaging that I would have thrown away. But it's important for this project that you don't use cardboard. You need a template material that you can see through because you're going to be doing mirror image segments. Okay? So she actually gives you two of the same template L's and she suggests that you might want to cut out a few more because what we're going to try to do is we have seven stars to make these are the long arms of the star and we're going to make each star just a little bit different to have variety and in fact so we'll do six of these star arms patterns from the wide segments for the center star which you already know has a different background we're going to cut the template from the narrow border. So, and this, just one little caveat. Jenny gives you wonderful instructions, beautiful instructions, and also a wonderful video. So, if you are doing Stellaris, I recommend you get her instructions and you watch her video first. I'm just kind of showing you what it's like for me as just a regular quilter to work on a kit and a kit that's a block of a month pattern so that you can have an idea of what it's like for me. But the expert is Jenny Beyer and I would go, I would go by her instructions first. So this is just fun for me and I thought I'd take you along for the ride. So I'm going to take this one template. I'm going to lay it. Now I start near the top. Make sure though that you have the same point that you're going to start at for this template is showing on all three because not all the fabric is exactly even. So you want to make sure you have plenty of room to start your first template. I'm going to place this template up near the top. I don't want to waste fabric. That's another thing. You will use up your entire one yard of fabric doing all. You have to do 42 of these long arms and 42 of these. And these, the long arms take up the most fabric. So do not do any cutting until you have traced on everything you need to. 
so that you know you can fit it because otherwise you might have to go back you know it would be real easy to start my first piece right down in the middle of all this wonderful activity going on in the fabric but I'm going to start up high because I don't want to take a chance on running low of fabric so because the other piece is saved for another time it also has a mirror image line running down the middle of the template if you make your own templates make sure you have a, a line down the dead center of your template that shows you how to line it up with the very center of this wide border all right then you lay this on here you put that mirror image line right with the line that runs down the center then I take my this is a Jenny Byer pencil which I really enjoy it's a leaded pencil and you when you need to have more point you more lead coming out the front you just tap 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 but this works wonderfully with this template to mark the line on the fabric that you can see coming through that will give you a really good reference point as to where to put this template the next time so that you make sure you've got six exact copies. So once I've gotten the registration lines on there, then I take my clover chalk marker. I love, most of the time I use a good tailor's chalk but this time I forgot to bring it so I found this in my kit I've had this 30 years it's a clover it's a rotary wheel notched wheel that will that will distribute the chalk very nicely evenly it works very well and also you can refill it with your chalk so now I've taken and I've drawn this and I need six of these exact so that's where then I'll go and I will run it along each same position on each of these wide stripes okay so I do this care holding it carefully checking my points I do this for all six wide stripes then I know I have a set now the nice thing about this template material I have an eraser on the end of this pencil and I just come along and erase those registration points and that way I can come down set up my template for the next the next pattern and then I draw on here the markings so that I can get this template placed in the exact same location for my next for my next six pieces for my next star and I'll draw one more point one more registration right here so now I have a new registration points I'll put this back on though and then making sure it's right the mirror line is right down the center and then I'll mark my next one okay so then I go on and go all six of that and you continue on until you have six distinct pieces for six distinct stars now then you have this template M one thing I've noticed so you don't have to erase the temp templates constantly one side of this template you can draw what I term this design here I term it a flower design just to make it easier okay so it's just a bunch of little loops then this one is a good geometric and wh what I'm going to do with template M's is take turns between doing 
the what I refer to just to make it easy is a flower design or geometric or flower or geometric so on this side of the template I have the registration lines drawn of the flower then on the other side I drew the registration points of the geometric and that way I can just go down I can use the same template without having to erase and redraw the lines each time. If I place it this side up, I see easily see the flower design. Then I take, I put the points, the holes at the bottom, I put right at the edge of this stripe fabric, and then I run my chalk marker right here along the bottom and then up the side here and on this side over here and I'm very careful here I just veered out a little bit so I'll come back and neaten that up but then I have my piece ready to go so then I would move up now to make it easier so the tips don't bump each other I'll just turn this around because this narrow border is the same design the whole the whole width, the whole measure of it. So I line up my registration points, make sure it's lined up really well, and then I go around and I mark it. Now, if I were to do, let's say I'm going to do, I would do this, and I have to have six of those, and let's say I want to, I'm starting now for the geometric. I turn over to the side where the geometric design is the strongest. I lay it right here. I match up the registration points, making sure the little registration holes are right here at the bottom of this border. And then I use my chalk marker and mark this. Being careful now not to rub on this as I go because I need these to stay nice and sharp. Six of the six pieces, 36, come out of the wide of the long star tips, come out of the wide border and I think I told you that one for the center star is going to come out of the narrow border. Okay, so for the center star, I'm going to cut the six points out of the narrow border and I will just find, making sure I'm going to have that design all the way across. I'll find the top point here, then making sure that the center line runs perfectly even and then I will draw my registration marks so that I know that all six of these will come out exactly the same and that is very important if you want to, it to work beautifully alright and rip more registration points like this then I come along and use my chalk marker line back up with my registration points making sure the center mirrored line lines up with the very center of the fabric there we go then now to cut the next piece I've got to come all the way down I can't put it right under this one because I have to line this up this is the only long star point that will be cut from the narrow border so I have to come down until I can match it exactly and then I will draw that with the chalk marker and there I go so I'll do that and this one's different the others I go six across this is going to be six down so I will do that as I go alright and another thing um, I just want to tell you going back here to these templates just make sure that the mirror line the mirror line which is the line straight across here 
make sure that mirror line goes right down the center of this design right down the center make sure your registration points are right at the bottom there's an arrow right here that shows you that it's supposed to run with the long grain of the fabric so now I'm going to take draw all of these on my one yard of fabric when they're all drawn on I will then cut these stripes apart because that way if I try to cut out all of these pieces with it as one large piece of fabric I have found my hands will rub off all the chalk marks by accident and I won't be able to see where I'm going to cut so I have decided when this one yard is filled up with all of my templates then I will just cut the fabric down the stripe marks and deal with one stripe of cutting out at a time it's easier and it will keep me from accidentally erasing my chalk marks so I'll come back when I have these just about cut out okay as you can see I've done the cutting and now I have seven distinct star tips six pieces per star and I've got all of those and then I'm doing the final cutting out of my lip my template M's and I've got all of these done and as you can see of the one yard of fabric all I have is little scraps left I have used every bit this is this is not even big enough for one so you will use up that one yard of fabric and leave only little bits this is not even big enough so plan it out carefully so that you get all enough pieces and one thing else I found out too I knew that I had seven stars and I knew that I had to make six center mirror image center pieces per star. Don't say, well, six times seven equals 42. That's a mistake I made. And I had to come back and cut out some extra pieces for the centers because you can't look at it as you need 42 pieces. There's two different designs. So to make the stars, you're going to have four of one pattern. This is the geometric, or four of what I call the floral, and three of the other. So what to have seven star centers, you need, let's say, four florals times six. You need 24 florals. Then three times six, you need 18 of the geometrics. You see what I'm saying? So don't just do 42 because that would end up with one star would have half a center of one design and half a center of another. So make sure when you cut out that you decide whether once you'll have an extra star of geometric or an extra star of floral and make that one cut more of that one 24 versus 18 of the other okay we have all of our templates cut out and I tell you what it was careful work I am not used to being so careful but I want it to really turn out beautifully so it's worth it and doing this is one of the reasons I love mysteries I love block of the months you're able to focus on that month's directions and take it just a little more slowly a little more careful till you get it just right so now we're going to sew these pieces together we make two different shapes so let's see how we're going to do it okay so we have our pieces we have our compass star points and I have the paper piecing from last month so I had to figure out how do I work 
when the back is covered in paper. Because remember, you're not supposed to take the paper off until you've sewn that particular side into another part of the block. The reason for that is that since these blocks may be cut on biases. Now, I do believe with Jenny's, everything we cut was straight of grain. But some of these edges will probably be biased edges. And we don't want them to stretch. So keeping the paper on, sometimes people will make a basting stitch barely inside, one eighth of an inch inside the edge to keep the paper with it. I've done it enough years, I know not to stretch these edges and I'm extremely careful. Plus, I starched my fabric so that it would have some extra body just in case. So here's what I start with. And this is the piece from last month, paper piece. So now what am I going to do so that I can hand sew? Now I'm going to go ahead and get my thread ready and I'll show you quickly and I've been very pleased I use Coates and Clark's this is the dual duty XP I'm very happy with it and that way I can get it at different shops like Joann's on sale for half price let's see I'm going to thread this needle and if I have too much of a problem then I get my, this I do believe is a clover, yes, it's a clover desktop needle threader. I'm sure you've seen these in catalogs or in shops and they do work. You put your, the eye of your needle down in this hole, then you run the thread across right down in this notch and pull it snug then it says number two because it shows number one put the needle in number two is put the thread here but they have it push this button and let's see nope didn't quite work this time I'll try it again sometimes you have to try it a couple times so I'm threading my needle and I leave my thread about 20 inches long I'm not a big fan of constantly re-threading my needle. Now how I put a knot on the end of the thread is I lay the thread on my finger, put the needle on top of it, and then wrap the thread around the tip of the needle about four or five times, then hold on to that twisted thread on the end of there, and pull the needle out and let the knot slide down to the end of my thread and there you have it you see my cute little knot all right and I forgot to bring beeswax or thread conditioner but normally I like doing that because it helps keep the thread from knotting up so now I was talking about how am I going to sew a paper piece pattern to how am I going to sew a paper piece pattern to the compass star points that I've got cut out well I figured out what I wanted to do what I'm going to do and what I already have done on this one is I took and pulled this, where these seams come across, I pulled the fabric loose from the paper just for two stitches. Did the same thing for this side over here. Two stitches worth. Then I folded back the paper for the paper piecing on the dotted line. Okay. So see how I folded it back on the dotted line. If you'll look here, see the dotted line? I folded it right on that dotted line. It gets very easy to do when you've done enough of them. Folded it on the dotted line here. 
And then I take my scissors and I cut this part away because I'm going to I like to start on this end and I just cut that away so it's not even going to bother me and this I leave folded then I'm going to come up and grade see where the seam came together from the white and this there's actually three pieces of fabric because one two and three it's a little bumpy and heavy there for hand sewing so I'm carefully just going to grade that seam allowance. I turned my scissors, graded it. Now I'm going to come over here and trim away the top part of this paper and then fold the rest of this on the line. Take your fingernail and mark the dotted line, fold it, run your fingernail across and you can see it folded right on the dotted line and then I'm going to grade this little seam here too making sure not to cut the stitches here but turning my scissors this way so it'll grade the seams and it cuts them just slightly staggered length now I don't need this paper right here in my way right now while I'm sewing so I take and I fold that back and as you see I couldn't do all of that if I had stitched all the way around but now I have the paper out of my way. I pick up one of the compass star points and I place it, match the dots. You know on the template it had I, had, I had punched holes in the template so I could place dots on my fabric to line up. I take and put a pin down well out of my stitching range so I don't poke my hand and the dot here lines up with the dot on the point the dot on this fabric lines up with the dot there now I take my thread and I'm going to start from this side Jenny recommends you start sewing from here up then add your next piece and continue down but just for my sake since I'm working with paper piecing from last time I like to start up here and you don't go all the way to the edge remember that dot is there for a reason so I come in because that allows them to make the next seam without getting in the way because each fabric has to share that place alright so I come in at the dot I make a stitch and then I go back just a little half stitch to lock my thread in place and you might have a hard time seeing it right now but I have to avoid this paper I have a needle that's very big and thick I don't know why I picked up this needle but it's making it too hard for me to sew so I'm going to let me pick up a different needle this one is much thinner finer and shorter because I can make my shortest stitches with a shorter needle but that other needle that was a pain and when you're trying to sew around paper you don't need a big fat stiff needle. I prefer nice short thin needles with big eyes so that I can thread it. I'm having a problem threading it because the thread has come unraveled a touch so I'm going to cut a good piece off, cut the thread at an angle so I have a nice sharp point and then come in this part came off the spool first went through the eye of my needle it goes down the length and then makes my knot and it's important because you don't it, it just helps keep your thread from knotting up tangling up it keeps it smoother and you saw how I did that knot I just take put the thread on my finger place the needle on top 
wind the thread three to five times around the needle hold on to that wound part make sure my thread stays straight and just slide those the wound round part all the way down to the bottom of the thread where it makes a very nice knot so now I've threaded a better needle let's see how this works my favorite needles are the John James golden eye large eye and the coated needles that are called golden glide oh my gosh they are just wonderful alright so here I told you I folded cut this part off folded the paper out of the way and I like to I know Jenny goes from this end up so she doesn't have to break the thread before she sews another piece on the other side but for me since I'm trying to hand sew over paper piecing section I like to start up here you don't go to the end of the two pieces of fabric you start at the dot that way you can when you have to come down this side you have to, be able to open that up to allow the new piece of fabric I take a first stitch then I go back and loop again another stitch right in place that way it locks my stitches okay then I just take and I basically hold the needle still normally I leave this paper here so I can it, it acts as a marker for my quarter inch line but I'm afraid you're not able to see what I'm doing so I fold it back and hold it and I keep my needle still and I kind of rock the other hand and load the stitches on the needle when I have as many as I can comfortably handle which was about six or seven then I'll pull the needle through so then what I do is where it I took the last stitch I come back behind that a half a stitch or so and make another locking stitch and it's just my way of having a very sturdy very sturdy seam line that won't easily come apart alright and I am with Jenny she opens up her seam and kind of goes behind it but since I'm dealing with this paper piecing I'm gonna go right on across now you know why I graded those seams so I wouldn't have that lump of three additional fabrics plus the two behind it. I did my locking stitch, got over that thick area. Now I'm stitching to the end. And I always love this part because it goes so quickly. No obstacles in the way. Just remember to stop at the dots at the end. Don't go all the way to the end of the fabric. But you notice how nicely my fabrics, my thread is doing? So just remember, thread has a right way and a wrong way. I'm going to now move this needle that I'm going to now move this pin down so it will help me hold these pieces of fabric together and I go back behind I always do a locking stitch where I go back behind the stitch I just finished with and then as I said you just load the fabric onto the needle it's always harder for me to do it on camera because I'm sitting funny but let's see if you can see the stitches on the needle okay so I recommend when you hand sew you can sew every bit as good as a machine if you remember the locking stitch and then keep those stitches small and you do it by keeping the needle relatively still and just rocking the fabric onto the needle and then do another locking stitch and as you see it really doesn't take long at all to do this
Now, if you are not comfortable stitching a quarter of an inch, then please feel free to draw the line at a quarter of an inch. I've been sewing since they invented the needle, or at least it feels like it, and so I don't have a problem with finding that quarter of an inch. Even at that, I often will double check myself and put a quarter of an inch up against just to make sure that my eye is still seeing accurately. Okay, I have reached the dot at the end. So what I'm going to do is pull the thread up into a loop. Let me get this pin out of the way. The thread keeps wanting to catch it. I've pulled my thread into a loop right here on my thumbnail and I'm going to once, twice, go through and pull that into a nice knot. Now I can always knot it again and if I did that then I lay it on the on the table and I make a loop of the thread, run the needle through it and then slide that knot down to the end and there I have a double knot. I don't really think it's going to be that important these are not going to be manhandled before they are put into another seam line. And let me show you my stitching. There's my stitching. And as I'm talking, some of my stitches were bigger. These are my normal stitches that get a little bit smaller. But I always like to bring this up and make sure that, yep, relatively, towards the end I'm holding it funny. It got a little shallower. I can always go back and touch that up. But now I take and open this up and I'll just show you right here. I just run my fingernail down the seam line to, to get that seam done. All right. Now on this piece, I'm going to put two of these. I'm going to make something that looks like this. And what is going to look odd to you is that the wide part of the compass star arm is going to go right here at the point of this one. So that's going to, it looks like a, a little bit like a bat. So, but that is exactly what you're supposed to do. And I will pin this in place so that I have it lined up. And because that sound you heard was catching my finger. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is pull it away just for a couple stitches. Pull it away from here and fold it on the seam allowance line. It's a dotted line that's a quarter of an inch for the seam allowance. Fold it all the way down. Then come in here and trim away this top inch just to make it easier for me. Then I need to grade these seams. So I'm going to come in here and at an angle, not cutting through the stitching, I graded those seams. Then I'll take and fold this out of the way. And now I'm ready to sew again. Now there's one thing I probably forgot to do, and I try to get into a habit of doing, yep, I didn't do it. I try to always knot my thread when I finish a seam. As soon as I cut it, I knot it. And the reason I do that is because that way when I'm all ready to make that next seam, and see I made a very nice knot. I like a good size knot. But that way, when, I'm, when I've got this just right and I'm holding it in my hand, I don't have to put it down and start making another knot. So, okay. So I come up here, start on the dot, make my first stitch, then come in halfway back 
and start stitching again. I'm going to push this out of the way again so you can see. And I'm just starting, because of paper piecing, I'm starting down this end. If it weren't for the paper piecing, I would be doing it the other way, so I would be holding the bulk of this in my hand. But I want to make sure I get this correct. And understand, right now I'm leaning forward and holding this under the camera, so you're not seeing my best stitches, but that's okay. I want you to get the idea of what I'm doing. So. But every time I pull the needle through, I straighten, stretch back out my gathered stitches, and then when I start again, I do that locking stitch. So I always go one little tuck back. And you know, when you get into a habit of doing this, then you can do it without even stopping and thinking. I'm having to think of it now just to make sure I, I tell you all my little steps. But I love doing this. I sit back and listen to an audio book or I watch a television show or listen to the radio. And it's just really, it's, it's quite pleasant. And it's nice not to always be sitting in front of a sewing machine. Sometimes it's nice to have a break. Now I'm going to move that paper out of the way so that I can more easily hold these two pieces of fabric in place. Oh, this is another thing. I'm coming up, I'm coming down here where I'll be sewing right near this other seam allowance. I'm going to grade that seam too, down to an eighth of an inch. So do you see how I graded that? See how I graded that? That way it stays out of the way of my next hand sewing. And I can always, too, take that graded seam allowance and just flip it back like this. And then hold this firmly so that when I'm sewing and come down that way, I don't cross over into it. Okay. Alright, so I've trimmed that seam allowance and I'm holding it back. And now I'll take this fabric... It is hard to do just sewing, holding my hands in such an odd position. I'm in my motor home, so I don't really have a setup that I do at home. I don't really have as nice a setup where I can put it at a better angle. Sorry about that. So now I did my locking stitch. And then I finish. I'm headed down the finish line. And this, this is coming out much better. So I'm getting used to leaning over in this awkward position. <laughs> okay, making sure my fabric is perfectly aligned. almost down to my dots okay now I'll make my locking stitch which is leave a loop and go through the loop the same from the same direction two times and I'm done now I don't know how she wants us to press this but I've noticed that they tend to want to be pressed to the dark, which I would want them. This fabric is very light. I really don't want them bleeding through. So I'm going to go ahead and grade this seam allowance. And now, there we go. And I'll take and press with my fingernail. I can fold the paper back out into place. Let me do this other side. 
fold it with my fingernail and there we go we have the bat shape piece so what what I've got here is I have two of this shape and I need two of this shape and that way I'll use my one two three four five and my, one more of these will be my sixth compass star arms because remember we needed six and see how they're cut identical so now I need to make one more of these and I have been working a little ahead so let me show you what I've got first I'm going to pick up my needle put a knot on the end so that when I'm ready to do the next piece I'm ready all right so I've got my knot on that now I'm ready to put it back over here all right so let me show you what I've already made all right so this is my last compass arm that will then take up two of these. So I'm, I've am i made very good pro progress. I've only got two sets of these left. Alright. I keep them grouped together. Here is my center star. Remember it has a different background color. Also she suggested that you cut your compass star arms out of the narrow border. See the narrow border? So this is done from the narrow border and I think it looks really nice. So I have two of these that uses four of the compass pieces that I cut in mirror shape and then two of these. So that makes up all six. So here are the pieces for this star and just to show you that how can these pieces make a star let me move this a little out of the way so I can show you alright so these are going to be put we know this goes to the center so I'm going to assume these go opposite okay then this has to go to the center Okay. and then this has to go to the center so there we go do you see it and then I know with the other small pieces with these small pieces I know that they are going to make a kaleidoscope center and I don't sew these center pieces yet that will be next month directions. I didn't see anything on this month that tells me. But then you'll see where we'll have these meet. Okay. So now you're starting to see what the directions are going to tell you. But I'm not going to sew any further than these individual pieces until she tells me because I trust her to know the best way to put these star points together because for me it looks like a lot of Y seams and Y seams can be difficult and I want her direction but what I do is take and put these together now since they're for the same star this is all I need for that one part of the star for this month here is another set that I've made all by hand See my stitches and here is another star components and I just pin them together so that I know they all belong together and here's another one so once I get one more of these made then this star will also be done and then I just have two star components left so that means I'm almost done with five of the seven stars and I would say this is probably taking me 
just a couple of hours to do. So it's very reasonable. A lot of people think, oh, hand sewing takes too long. Not really. Not when you get used to it. But now these I'll put like this. And that's, then that goes with this star. And then I have these two left to do. I'll come back and show you when all are set. I got them done by June 9th. Now I have to sit and wait until next month. It'll be hard to do because I had a good time making these and I can't wait to see what comes next. That was month three of the Jenny Byer Stellaris block of the month or technique of the month. And I hope I was able to share with you why I love hand piecing so much. It's very relaxing. And in fact, I'm sitting right on this nice couch with a pillow behind me. I lay down, put my feet up, start hand sewing, turn on a chick flick, and what a nice way to spend a vacation. So it's raining outside today, so might as well. But the rain has slowed down, so I think I need to go get in the lake. I'm going to be wet anyway. I'm not going to let a little rain stop me. Well, take good care, and I will see you again for month four, which should happen the first Saturday in July. So make sure you get this month's clue finished so you're ready to go. I love, I challenge myself to stay on target because that way when it's over, I've got a quilt top ready to go. And nothing's better than that. Nothing tastes better than finished. <laughs> so take good care, and I'll see you next month. Bye-bye. A little bit of sewing I've got left to do today. So I do in... Okay, I'm going to start again. Hello. I, hello Jenny Bias Stellaris fan. Hello Jenny Bias Stellaris fans. I am doing part month. I prefer nice, short, thin needles with big eyes so that I can thread it. I'm so I have a nice sharp point and then come in and thread it. Just wonderful. They go through the fabric so well.